All right, I wanted to record a video about transform repeat, and I'll preface this by saying this is definitely one of the more experimental uh, modifiers, and I think that the interface for it's going to change, but I wanted to show it to you because it's pretty powerful and pretty interesting, I think. So just to sort of um, start off, I wanted to note that you know any shape that you have in Cuddle has one of these transforms um, on it. And this tells you where the, the shape is, the position of it, also the rotation, so like how many degrees it's been rotated. Um, all of these can be controlled either by, you know, um, moving these, these handles that go around the shape, um, you know, scaling it or rotating it. You can also um, change it in this area. So I can like change the rotation here or type in a number if I want. Same with scale. Um, I should also point out with scale, scale can either be a number. So like 1.5 means that this uh, polygon should be 1.5 times bigger than it normally is. So it's normally this big with scale one. Um, so scale can be a number, or if you're um, a non-uniform scale, so if the aspect ratio isn't um, preserved, then it's a vec, uh, meaning that it has an x component. So let's say two by one, for example, that would mean that this is stretched out two in the horizontal axis and one in the vertical axis. To zero to make it more clear. All right, so that's what this whole sort of transform thing is doing. And transform repeat is going to be applying a transform multiple times in order to create the repetitions. So say that I start with a polygon and I apply transform repeat. Um, so like all the other repetitions, it has this um, you know control for how many how many copies do you want, and then it also has parameters that are going to be the same as the traditional transform. So, it, for example, it has position. By default, position is set to um, one zero, which means that on every repetition, it's going to move over one unit to the in the x direction horizontally uh, and zero in the y. So it's essentially a linear repeat. And the thing is that transform repeat is sort of it's powerful enough to implement um, all these other repeats. Um, so linear repeat is just a transform repeat where you're changing the position. And so I can change the x and y position. Um, Similarly, a rotational repeat is the same as if I were to put the position to zero, so it's not changing the position at all, but it's changing the rotation. So here I can change um, the rotation on each iteration. So for example, 30 would mean that I take my original um, shape and I rotate it 30 about the center. I rotate it 30 degrees, and then I can have you know as many copies as I want. Um, and so this, and then finally, you can do scale. So every repetition can have a different scale. And that's something that you can't do with any of these uh, traditional repeats. So um, I can change the um, x scale down and the y scale down. Generally, I'll want to change these at both the same amount because I usually want to do something uniformly. So if I click and uh, I just type in a number here, so say 0 0.95, then um, I can change this number and it will do a uniform scale by that amount. So if this is set at uh, 1, then that means on every repetition, I'm scaling by 1, which means keep it the same. Scaling by one is like multiplying by one. It's keeping something the same. If 
but if I want each repetition to be smaller, then I could put uh, that number down and each one will scale accordingly. So this particular combination where you set the position to be zero and you do a rotation and you do a uniform scale, this is one that I like to use a bunch with transform repeat. Um, you can create some really neat kinds of shapes, I think. Um, so if I were to, for example, take this and I can move the original shape and you know the transform repeat is just doing what it's doing. Um, you can create these really cool spirals. Um, I'll also often combine this kind of thing with a rotational repeat. Um, so I'll have you know a couple of these, and then with my transform, um, maybe I'll set the rotation to be a little bit less. Maybe I'll scale it a little bit more. Um, there's a lot of things you can do to play around with this, um, and of course also playing around with how many, um, you know, this this is there. There are seven copies of this spiral. Uh, that's what that seven is doing, right? It's putting seven copies around the center. Um, so this combination of a transform repeat and a rotational repeat, where the transform repeat has position zero, zero, and a rotation and a uniform scale factor, um, this one's great. Like, I think you can find a lot of fun things to do with that. Um, and that's probably the one that all that I've been playing with the most. But, um, you know, you can do other things with this. Um, so I'll try to just show another, um, another example of the transform repeat. Um, basically, um, you know, when you're doing this and you're changing the scale, it sort of creates these, these like uh, fractal kinds of designs. And so um, something that um, Ryan was playing with and I started playing with a bit is um, doing these sort of fractal things to make organic shapes. Um, like a lot of plants have sort of these fractal spirally qualities to them. Um, so I'm going to try to do this and we'll see how it works out. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn snapping on. I'm going to make a sort of leaf or petal shape. And um, I want it to sort of connect to the next one. Um, and I will mirror repeat that. So this is sort of my base shape, and I'm going to call this component my leaf. And now I'm going to use this with the transform repeat to try to create sort of a fractal plant kind of uh, design. So I'm going to pull a leaf out. I'm going to go to transform repeat. And um, so I like to just. Um, the transform repeat, these these handles don't work very well, I think. Um, I want to redo the interface for how you actually modify the transform repeat in the canvas. I almost always will use the um, this inspector view and just modify these numbers by hand. Um, and I'll sort of play around with these uh, positions and rotations and um, uniform scale again, so I'll usually say 0 0.9. Um, I'll, I'll put an extra decimal precision, 0 0.90, so then I can uh, sort of play with the scale with a little bit more, uh, more precision. Playing with rotation and the positioning. Um, so right now I'm just going for like sort of a spirally pattern. Let's put a few more repetitions to see how this will play out. Um, something like that. And then to connect these, I will do merge paths. And that will connect all the um, sort of open endpoints that are close together. Um, so this is sort of, I think, what I'm going for. Um, and then to create the um, sort of the opposite side of this, 
what I found is that once you have something you sort of like here, you can just uh, duplicate this. So create another copy. And then um, if I go to edit flip vertical, um, it gets it pretty, pretty good. And then you can sort of change where the thing is. And um, this one I'll often resize down a little bit um, because on the inside of this, there's uh, less space for more of these pedals. Uh, I'll play with the rotation. Um, that's looking pretty good. And, um, you know, the great thing about this is if I want to change this shape at all, um, I can do that. So I um, take this. This is my leaf component. I'll double click on it in order to edit the leaf component. Um, the leaf component is this path, which is mirrored. I'll double click on the original path, and then I can, I'm going to turn snapping off. Um, then I can, you know, play with what that that shape is, uh, which can be pretty fun. And um, you know, if I don't like how these things are connecting, I can go in and make little tweaks to the um, the outgoing handle here, and then that'll change how these guys connect. Um, so yeah, I mean, you can you know play play with that. Um, I'm just double clicking out to go back to my original shape. Um, if you need to connect these together, um, what I'll do is I'll take both of these, um, my two, um, you know, two sides of the, the plant and apply a merge paths to that. And then that'll connect those and it'll make a little connection there too. Uh, another thing you could do, just sort of riffing, is um, maybe instead of merging these, I'll, um, let's say I don't merge them, and I'll just pull them out, and I'll delete that group. So I've got these, and then I could take these and, you know, put this together for another rotational repeat, and let's say I just have, like, three of them. And it'll be something like that, maybe. Um, and then I can do a um, merge paths on that. Merge paths. Um, and then I want to connect these together. So um, let's see. I'll, maybe I'll get rid of the merge paths there. And I'll draw. There's going to be sort of a thing that's going to be connecting these. So I've got that path. Um, I want this to be rotationally repeated as well. So I'm going to select both of these and go to Edit Group and move the rotational repeat up there. So I've got something like that. And now, now this is cool. Now I can take this and do Merge Paths, and then that'll merge these. And I'll need to um, double click in and double click this original path and sort of tweak it so that I get uh, nice connections. So yeah, that's uh, things that you can do with transform repeat and combining it with all the other modifiers.